Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. It was so nice to see some of the cast members of Suits at the Golden Globes. Now, Rachel and Louis Litt were both missing. When asked about Meghan, Patrick had this to say. We've heard all these rumors that Meghan may come back to acting. Would you guys team up again? You heard that rumor? Uh, yeah, well, I mean... No, I think I think the truth is is that we made up a rumor because we wanted to ask you about it, um, and that's the truth. But but would would you like would you ever team up again? I think Megan's a fantastic actor, so we'd be lucky to have her back in the industry. Sure. But most important. Nice yes, yes. Yes. Let's go. I'll do it. Can again. We do a spinoff or something. Yeah, I'm ready. Mike and Rachel in Seattle. While even more revelations about the Epstein scandal unfolds, the UK press continues to use the good old projection and destruction tactic. And for some reason, I really don't think that 2024 will be the year that they'll be able to sweep it under the rug as they've been doing for years past. This scandal has made global news. King Charles faces pressure to strip his brother Prince Andrew of his royal title and the police are being called to begin a probe. This could possibly be the worst start to the new year for King Charles as his brother is once again linked to a scandal which presents a direct threat to the crown. This comes as the 63-year-old Duke of York was named among several well-known individuals in the newly released court documents. King Charles' younger brother was mentioned numerous times in both the first and second batch of documents released earlier this week, which totals to over a thousand pages. However, the naming of individuals does not necessarily indicate any wrongdoing. It can be noted that Prince Andrew vehemently denies all allegations in connection to the almost 10-year-old lawsuit. Senior advisors to the royal family want the king to ban Prince Andrew from all royal gatherings as the issue is not going away and the palace cannot ignore it. Meanwhile, anti-monarchy activist group Republic posted on social media, and I quote, it's time for the Met Police to act, end of quote, stating that they have filed a complaint against the Duke of York. The Metropolitan Police said it was aware of the release of the documents, but no investigation had been launched. Since Charles has become a monarch, the royals have been plagued by scandal after scandal. Cash for Honours, the Duke of York scandal, and of course Harry and Meghan's exposure of what really happens behind palace doors. Plus, the Not My King slash Republican movement have been popping up quite frequently. A recent poll suggests that the support for the monarchy is at an all-time low. The first time support for the monarch has fell below 50% in a new poll. Mind you, you guys know that I don't really believe in polls, especially these days where I feel like a lot of this is used as a tool for the media to push some sort of narrative. For instance, in America, I don't know how a thousand people can be the voice for 400 million people in this entire country. So in this article from The National, it says support for the monarchy has fallen below 50% for the first time, according to a new poll. Campaign group Republic commissioned a poll by Savanta on the royal family under the reign of King Charles. And what this article continues to point out is that Prince Andrew has done the most significant damage to the monarch and also the concerns from Meghan and Harry as well. And how Prince Charles or King Charles has handled that. And to those points, I say that this is true, if this poll is to be believed. Just yesterday, uh, more documents came out from the whole scandal, and it shows that allegedly there's a state. And it doesn't help when you see segments from UK media channels with stuff like this. The generation that the, the elder um, royals are from was a very coddled royal generation you know there are these stories of where the toothpaste was put on the toothbrush for them you know having their shoes and their outfits picked out for them all of these things meaning that they never learned a decision-making process they never learned common sense they never learned boundaries and never before even in like i knew when these epstein documents were going to be revealed this month i knew the uk press was going to try to make one plus one equal three, and two plus two equal five. There is something to be said that having a lot of power can drive a person to do very questionable things. Come on now. Oh, but does the train of excuses get much worse? Let's take a look. Daily Express 
It would be the most significant step towards restoring his reputation and finding a way back to public life, which he desperately wants. Well, there you go. What a tantalizing thought. Should Andrew remarry Sarah Ferguson? Lady C, is that the idea? Would that save him? Well, I don't know that it would save him, but I think it's a very good idea. Why are we discussing PR tactics? Why is the UK press so bent on bringing this man back to the fold? What? This is why, if this poll is to be true, this is why they are suffering. This is not the years of my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents where they wasn't so media savvy like we are today. People are way more aware how PR works, how these ridiculous tactics that the press and the figureheads use to just try to pull a fast one over us. And people see if you're going to spend every waking day writing every waking stupid article about every single non-existing something that Harry and Meghan did or didn't do and speculating everything that, that's going on in their life or maybe going on in their life. If you can do that, then there's no way you can't hold not only Prince Andrew to account, but you can also hold the palace, the king, Prince William, because there's no way that these people not only see and know what's going on, but the fact that they knew this was going on, that this all this stuff was going to come out. But they still thought it was okay to do this whole PR stunt with Sarah Ferguson to try to push this whole narrative. Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson may or may not get remarried. They still is doing these stupid PR moves. Which tells people that these people do not give a damn and or that they're out of touch with what's reality. So I'm sorry. Although I don't believe in polls, this one just may be true. It just may be. Like Trey, I'm very wary of polls because they're so very easy to manipulate. But with all of the Not My King protests, the way Charles has unabashedly support Andrew while saying absolutely nothing while men were jailed for the threats against Prince Harry and Prince Archie, Charles and the palace taking no accountability for their concern over Archie's complexion, and a lot of other things that the House of Windsor has been involved in, a lot of people outside the royal bubble see the Windsors as as dysfunctional and out of touch, among other things. Now the palace knows this. They know that the support for the monarchy is on a downward decline and has consistently been that way. They know that they're not connecting to the younger generation the way that they'd like. And so Charles has started to use social media influencers in an effort to bridge the gap. Do I think this will work? No. The younger generation prizes authenticity and the Windsors are all about performative PR. This week, actor Peter Capaldi slams grown men who waste their time attacking Meghan Markle. We're talking to you, Piers Morgan, Jeremy Clarkson, and well, just about every middle-aged or elderly Caucasian man in the UK press <laughs> that is a royalist or a right-winger. But as someone who is quite fond of Peter Capaldi, him being one of my favorite Doctor Whos, uh, it's good to know that I can be a fan of him on screen and off because his commentary was spot on. Prince Harry is to be inducted in the Living Legends of Aviation Hall of Fame, joining aviators who have made significant contribution in the aerospace industry, including Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. The ceremony will take place in Beverly Hills on January 19th. Since this has been announced, the meltdown has <laughs> been spectacular. I don't think I've seen uh, people in tabloids and royalists on social media lose their minds. Maybe the last time it happened to that degree was when Spare was released last January. <laughs> there are questions being raised about, well, why Harry? Why not someone like British astronaut Tim Peake, for example, who perhaps might be more deserving of that title? I suppose one of the things about award ceremonies is this. 
you might be offered an award. You might be told we would like to bestow upon you the great honour of whatever this award is. But it is within your gift to say, well, thank you very much. I don't think I deserve it. I'd rather not accept thank you. I don't feel right about this. I'm not going to come and get it. So it would have been possible for Harry to say, thank you very much. Very delighted. Very kind of you. But I don't really think I am an aviation legend and I don't feel right about accepting it. So no, thank you. He could have done that. Yeah, and we don't know, Vanessa, what his response has been. And we don't know whether he's going to be attending uh, the award itself, which is taking place in Beverly Hills on the 19th of January. The event going to be hosted by John Travolta, who Meghan and Harry have become friends with in uh, recent years. We don't know whether he's going to be turning up, but the organisers will certainly be hoping he will be there because that draws all eyes onto their event, doesn't it? Mm. Well, we'll have to wait and see until uh, January the whether he's there can we all just take a second and just enjoy how absolutely unhinged these two women are not to mention the absolute audacity okay of this statement to believe that you could tell another human being what they should and should not accept because you don't like them is laughable like you have no power here and that is what we're seeing from the british media and that's what i think we've been seeing from them for the last few years they have lost control of the narrative when it came to harry's life they have lost power over this man and they do not know what to do with themselves it is so much harder to sell articles like this trying to convince the entire world oh my god hollywood is so tired of them hollywood hates them they're awful they're terrible blah 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 and then oh harry he's here's an award hey harry come speak here for us come speak there for us it doesn't work the narrative that they've created around harry like this idea that this man is a failure and could can do nothing without his family not only is not true, but is being disproven over and over and over again. They keep trying to sell this idea that this is the year, this is the year, the year Harry and Meghan are going to fall on their faces, and then another year goes by, and that doesn't happen. Another year goes by, and you find people uplifting these two, praising these two, saying how amazing the work that they have done is. And as these people are kicking, screaming, and throwing up, trying to distract you from the work that Harry and Meghan are doing and trying to convince you that these people are not nothing, they are nothing, it just makes you wonder, as I said, not just the type of people they are, but the type of people who consume this media and to believe it. When I tell you I truly in my heart believe that derangers have the same intelligence and critical thinking skills of flat earthers when i tell you from the depths of my soul i think this is the same group of people because they will believe the most unhinged stories to make themselves feel better screaming that harry's not a pilot harry's not a pilot beloved he's a pilot well he's a co-pilot that's different i do you know what a co-pilot is boo boo and I don't think they do because a co-pilot is just a second pilot. But like that I means it's literally what it is. It's a second pilot. And it makes me wonder, do they think that when they're like flying on an airplane and then you have like the captain, which is like the pilot that's technically in control that day or on that flight, that if something was to happen to that person, do they think that the plane just goes down? That there's just nothing for us to do? Why do you think you have two pilots on a plane? Okay, they help each other, they navigate, but the second one is there for backup. Because if something was to go left, you have another pilot to take over. They've been trained in the exact same ways, but when I tell you these people, these people are not, they're not bright. They are not bright, and, it's, and I think a lot of it is just because they've been, not only have they just been fed so much hatred for these two people, they want these things to be true so desperately. They will try to destroy the English language and definitions to try to get to their their destination. And it's like, Boubert, cry about it. He was a pilot. There's nothing you can do about it. It's a fact. And your opinion actually doesn't matter on this situation. Because the people that worked with Harry, other vets, love this man. Other vets that work with him love him. And you, complete stranger, can't stand him. And you don't think that that says something?
And while the usual suspects are having a full-on meltdown, my timeline has been full of screenshots of so many vets over the years talking about what it was like to surf with Harry. Also, so many videos of Harry over the years of training and flying the Apache helicopter. This young man who could have done anything, could have stayed in the UK and, and, and done whatever, decided to put his life in the line, go to the most austere part of Afghanistan, not as a press stunt because it was where he wanted to be, and lead by example. And that's a story that's got to be told with all the other stuff. And I think taking his life as a whole, he's a man that, that deserves our respect and, and honor for what he's done. First time ever, Prince Harry's hair-raising stunt wowing the crowd. Watch this jaw-dropping, death-defying stunt. Harry weaves in and out, flipping the chopper almost all the way on its back. Watch the video again as the warrior prince cheats gravity. And little did the crowd know who the man behind the wheel is. In case there's anybody who hadn't realized who Captain Wales is, it's really Prince Harry. The crowd shocked. The announcer had to say it again. So there you have Prince Harry demonstrating in front of you. Showing off his stunts before landing the chopper safely. Oh, Harry, your talents are limitless. Also, the ones who are mad about an actual veteran being honored praises people like Kate who cosplays as G.I. Jane. For PR, that woman has not one day of military training under her belt, and that's acceptable to them. You can give her titles, dress her up, and praise her for taking photos. Also, people like Edward and Anne, who also have zero military training. I believe Edward started, but couldn't even finish training. Anne, absolutely zero. Sophie, dressed up in camo. That's acceptable. That's praised. That's positive. But an actual 10-year veteran who has served his country and continues to serve the veteran community on a global scale somehow should not be honored. So much of the British press and the royal institution's warped sense of what is positive and passable and what should be honored. People who have zero military experience being put up on a pedestal. <laughs> to everybody else outside of the royal bubble, it looks ridiculous. Because it is. So this is why, as much as they've been trying over the years to discredit Harry, it's not going to work. Harry continues to have a very close and growing relationship with the military and veteran community here in the US. This guy risked his life for us. Uh, he'd serve uh, far more dangerously than Prince William. I'm not criticizing Prince William for that. He deserves to be in that book, no question. Yeah. Don't you agree, JJ? Uh, Lord Vasey, <laughs> I agree completely. War is young men dying and old men talking. Harry, despite what you think of Harry, he put his life on the line for his country and his king. Most, most soldiers don't, get, don't even get to meet the king. They just sign up and they go and they're sent and, they, and you shoot and you do it do as you wish. And you can say, well, he shouldn't have spoken about what he, what he did. It's, it's up to him because you can, see, you, can, you can cite your personal examples of soldiers you've spoken to who said, you should never do that. I can cite soldiers I've spoken to who said, absolutely you can do that. You've got books, you've got films written about people's kill camps. People, soldiers do But it is, it. but that was, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it, that should have been their decision. That's my only, th the only that's thing I theory. Think. And is the, that that's what they were thinking. And perhaps that is what they're thinking, but I think it's an insult to Harry and to any veteran who has served two tours and now does all this great work for soldiers who are injured. Yeah, exactly. And yet they're going to put well, his... Not everybody can be on the list. I know, great, but, but he's no, doing it. I think his that's a, didn't do any serving. Well, Charlie Smith. That is a okay. really good point about Invictus, though. He set up the Invictus games. He Come did, yeah. he True. did. I mean, personally, I suspect that Harry's not going to be that bothered about being left out. Uh, the guest of honour, looking more than a little nervous ahead of what one royal official called the most serious speech of Prince Harry's life. A high-powered Washington audience had come to see him honoured for his work with those injured in combat. The award was presented by General Colin Powell, a world-renowned soldier and statesman. He has, of course, served in Afghanistan and fundraised with veterans who've overcome horrific injuries. Here, a group trekking to the North Pole. In Washington, the prince met British and American soldiers who've recently competed in the Warrior Games, a Paralympic-style event for personnel with serious injuries. To have someone as famous as he is uh, and as high as he is to add his support and show his support publicly for these guys, um, 
really raised the, the general public awareness. The public um, opinion of servicemen and injured servicemen has just gone through the roof. This was then a rather different Prince Harry, composed, diplomatic and warmly received. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Colonel Tom De La Rue, who was Harry's commander in the Army Air Corps, said Captain Wales, to give him his official title, had reached the pinnacle of flying excellence and was an inspiration to the officers and soldiers he worked alongside. Harry began the Apache course in 2010, taking 18 months to complete the training, and he was a star even then, picking up the prize for best co-pilot gunner. He became a fully operational Apache attack helicopter pilot in 2012, and just six months later went on to his first operational tour of Afghanistan. In July 2013, he became an Apache aircraft commander. Rob O'Neill, I mean, there's been a lot of backlash to this from the British armed forces, certainly. Almost everyone I've seen has shared the view of Colonel Kent that he shouldn't have gone down this avenue. Uh, we know you as the man who heroically shot the world's worst terrorist, and thank you again for doing that. Um, we know that you wrote about it yourself in a book, um, a great book, and you talk about other kills as well in there. Do, do you intrinsically have any problem with what Harry has said here? No, I don't have a problem with it at all, Pierce. If he goes through the proper channels, which I hope he did, um, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with talking about what happens in war. The man's flying an Apache helicopter, a kill helicopter. Um, yeah, I mean, he said what he said, and I think he was, he was nice about it. But, uh, you know, he said what he said, and I'm glad he said it, and, and um, you know, we can learn from what people did there. He will be inducted into the Living Legends of Aviation on Friday, January 19th, along with three others who have also made notable contributions to aviation. Harry like the other honorees, was selected by past recipients of the award. According to the organization, Harry is being honored for his work during the 10 years he served as an officer in the British Army as both a forward air controller and an Apache helicopter pilot, flying combat missions that saved the lives of Allied forces and countless civilians. Additionally, his creation of the Invictus Games, which enables wounded, sick, and injured service members to use sports as rehabilitation, has received global recognition for its impact on those who serve. This honor sounds like the perfect way to recognize the work that Harry has done and the work he continues to do in relation to the military. Why then has there been such an outcry of anger from royalists and royal reporters alike about Harry's selection for this award? The answer is confirmation bias. Harry receiving this honor is challenging some deeply held beliefs for some people. Confirmation bias is the human tendency to search for information that confirms our existing beliefs. And the existing belief that has been cultivated about Harry for decades is that he is less important and less capable than the heir. For generations of the monarchy, the heir has been propped up, assured that they are worthy of this God-ordained life. But the cultivating of Harry's role was made even more effective by the UK media's support of it. Very early, Harry was labeled the naughty one. He was the scapegoat, the rebel, the thicko, the drug addict, the playboy prince, and any other label that the media needed to use for a distraction that week. And true or not, this drip feed of stories over time created an image in the mind of Brits of who Harry is. Harry's relationship with Meghan and decision to move to America to protect his family has only increased the UK media's negative narratives about him. A week does not pass without Harry and Meghan's finances, marriage, mental health, and status being questioned, all while the tabloids continuously push stories of William and his seemingly perfect bride, his sex symbol status, and his endless popularity. Followers of the royal family have been unknowingly gaslit into believing that Harry is the problematic prodigal son and William is the perfect prince. They have deeply held beliefs about who Harry and William are without even realizing that those beliefs were formed for them. The more that someone becomes entrenched in their beliefs, as in the more tabloid narratives and British talk shows they ingest, the more hate groups they engage with online, the greater influence that confirmation bias has on their behavior. And when a person like that is presented with information that challenges their deeply held views, information that doesn't fit their confirmation bias, such as Prince Harry being honored as a living legend of aviation, 
it can create an actual physical reaction in them. No one likes learning that they are wrong about something, and oftentimes they cannot reconcile this new information with their beliefs. Imagine the thought process. Royalists are being confronted with the understanding that, yes, Harry was stripped of his honorary military titles, but if he's still being recognized for his military service, does that mean he is still respected in the military community? And if losing his honorary titles changed nothing, does that mean the titles don't mean anything at all? So what about the titles given to other royals? But we have to remember that analyzing new information takes time and effort. And for many, it's easier to just default back to what they already believe rather than allow their perception to be challenged. And that is when you see the hateful attacks come out. We see it often online. Royalists and anti-Harry and Meghan accounts repeat the misinformation that they were taught by the UK media. And when corrected or asked for sources to back up their claims, they often become angry because they can't. And again, this challenges the beliefs that they are so convinced are true. And that's when they resort to name calling, whataboutisms, doubling down on the false information. They create cartoons or characters of the situation and they attack the comment sections of organizations who support Harry and Meghan. All of this is a result of people just refusing to accept that the new information they've been presented with proves them wrong and they've been manipulated and lied to. They search for any information that will confirm their beliefs. Royalists were told that Harry and Meghan aren't liked in America, so they created the claim that Harry must have purchased this award. Someone even went as far as editing the organization's Wikipedia page to say that the award was purchased in order to support their belief. The page has, of course, since been corrected and locked, but the fact that it was even altered to begin with just shows how deeply held some of these beliefs are. Another piece of information that they tried to use because it fits their beliefs is that this must be an award that no one cares about. They had never heard of it, so surely it isn't important. But then they see that that same award has been given to Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, Harrison Ford, Morgan Freeman, and multiple other recipients whose names they definitely know. Another challenge to their confirmation bias. So they search out more information, different information, because they need something to support their beliefs. And as usual, they find it in the pages of tabloids and in the words of royal correspondents with one example being Angela Levin's latest argument that Harry doesn't deserve the award. Angela, who praised Harry's military ability and specifically his flying skills in the book that she wrote about him, is someone royalists can often look to for confirmation bias. With zero military experience or any understanding of the requirements for the award, she still attempts to diminish Harry's work as a pilot. And of course, the Daily Mail is another prime example. They would write articles full of praise for Harry when those articles benefited the royal family. But now that they don't, now that writing praise for Prince Harry is seen as problematic, the headlines have drastically changed. They also tried some whataboutism to argue that Harry is undeserving of this honor, claiming that maybe it should have went to another Brit, as if the idea that more than one person can deserve this award never occurred to them. Now, those who look to these sources to confirm their beliefs refuse to see that they're only being further manipulated into returning to their original belief that Harry is unworthy. But this reaction of completely unwarranted anger to Harry's selection for this honor is just a small part of a larger picture. It's an example in a long line of examples of those who say they support the monarchy or hate Harry and Meghan seething at any indication of their success, because this award, their financial independence, their happiness away from the royal family, those all challenge their confirmation bias on their core belief, the belief that might be the most important in this story. And that is the belief that the monarchy is both a necessary and beneficial institution. And the UK media, royalists, the royal family itself, cannot allow that belief to be challenged because that could lead to the entire monarchy falling apart. Yesterday via The Express, Prince Harry named living legend as he's inducted into Hall of Fame with Buzz Aldrin. 
And today via Express, Prince Harry's ridiculous award torn apart as expert questions living legend status. This is film critic, PR consultant, and of course, royal commentator, Richard Fitzwilliams, who is the one who questioned Harry's award. Now, we're not going to get into the article because who cares? We're going to get into him. In March of 2021, these two gentlemen by the name of Archie Manners and Josh Peters put together a, well, we'll say fictional <laughs> news company and invited royal commentators to come on and give an opinion before the airing of Harry and Meghan's uh, interview with Oprah. Again, no one had seen the interview, so they gave a blind opinion. Let's take a look. Would these paid commentators give a review of an interview they've not yet seen? To put this to the test, Archie and I set up a production company. Beneath the Fold Limited, we found some royal experts and used our very own royal expert to gauge their interest. This is genius. Let's keep watching. The experts were happy to act as if they'd already seen the interview. Their fees were negotiated and their contract signed. Mm. And now we'll get into our first subject. Ingrid Seward is the editor of Majesty magazine. Have you ever read Majesty magazine? No, but neither has anyone else, so yeah, that's all right. We're going to be doing a post-match analysis of Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah, which is obviously coming out in a few days' time. Richard Fitzwilliams, royal commentator. Ingrid Seward, I'm editor-in-chief of Majesty magazine. You, you've not seen the interview yet, have you? No. No, great. I think we have a fair idea of where the interview's going. We have a fair yes, idea. We do, yeah. definitely. You all heard that. They confirmed. Nobody has watched the interview before they gave this commentary. What was your overall impression of the interview? I think that this was an extremely hard-hitting interview. In the interview, to my mind, this was an actress giving one of her great performances. From start to finish, Meghan was acting. Again, this is the guy who tore apart Harry's award. Giving commentary on an interview he has yet to see. Oh, there's more. We're going to keep going. Do you think, looking back now, that Oprah went rather soft on Harry and Meghan? I think the interview was really um, an iron fist in a velvet glove. It was not a balanced interview. Oprah is a friend and gave them an easy ride. She was totally sympathetic. And there is a great deal in it that the palace will find deeply concerned. Listen, and I... I am very quick on my feet when thinking, but to pull out the lies that they are pulling out so quickly. All right. All right. Were you surprised in the interview to hear Meghan's comments about Prince William? To hear her talking about members of the royal family didn't surprise me at all. I think she was very unwise to do it, but she's the kind of woman that, you know, wants, wants her say. You guys are going to cackle at this man's response. If anybody was acting, baby, he give him the Oscar. <laughs> Megan used extremely strong language to describe her Destroy. relations with members of the royal household. Megan used extremely strong language to destroy. <laughs> Express, you have some explaining to do because this man and Ingrid both have tarnished their reputations as any type of, or to have any type of credibility, honestly. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why I said we are leaving Royal Sources in 2023 because you can't trust them. Hey babes, I'm back. So, Prince Harry is going to be honored as a living legend of aviation and John Travolta is hosting. Of course, the usual suspects are indeed upset. And my thing is, why? Like, why are you upset? I thought he was irrelevant. I thought he didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, I thought he was a second tier royal. I thought he was a third row royal, right? I thought everybody hated him and his wife. I thought Hollywood was snubbing him. His neighbors hate him. You know, his family's disgusted by him. You find him boring. So why are you so outraged that he's getting this award? They are so outraged that they went to um, the Wikipedia page of the living legends of aviation and they changed things around. 
Of course, now it's been fixed and the Living Legends of Aviation Wikipedia page is now locked so people can't make changes. However, raise your hand if you've never heard the Living Legends of Aviation before because I haven't until this week. And of course, they find some way to wrap other royals into this by saying that Prince Harry in induction into Aviation Hall of Fame has humiliated William Critic's view. And my thing is, I'm not really sure how this is a humiliation to William because it has nothing to do with him. So, and then of course, we have royal reporters like Rebecca English who reposted this article here about the fact that Harry does not deserve to be named a legend of aviation. And my thing is, it's not up to you guys if he is named a legend of aviation. Take it up with the people who voted for him. You know, times have definitely changed, especially since the same Rebecca English wrote this article for the Daily Mail back in 2011. This is not the first award that Harry has, has received. Back when he was a working royal and he did a tour in the United States, he was in Washington, D.C., where General Colin Powell gave him this award for the work that he did with wounded, with wounded vets. So this is not the first time he's ever received an award before. Now, this is what happens when you get your information from YouTube, Reddit, or that X app without doing your own independent research first. When the news broke about Harry receiving this honor, this was posted on Wikipedia on January 3rd, or Wikitext, whatever the hell you want to call it. Now remember that date, okay? Because eight days later, some white walking crown critter who felt some type of way about it went in and added paid for. And before you get started, anybody can edit on Wikipedia. Moving on. The title of this article is very misleading. It would have people like you believe that Harry paid for this, when in reality, they're not the ones that are saying these things. They're just quoting you angry white walkers who post this shit on the X app because they bank on the fact that you gullibles don't read past the headlines. So, a little advice. Put some semen in your ears before you go to bed tonight. That way your brain won't ooze out of your head when you're dreaming about ways to stick it to Harry and Meghan. Now shoot fly, quit bothering me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.